everyone, this is Mindy and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm playing with some new products from Hero Arts. These are from the summer 2023 catalog release and I'm leaving in my mistakes and showing you how I worked through them. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is playing with this color layering summer blooms stencil. So this is a four piece stencil. It's labeled down in the bottom corners, A, B, C, and D. Now there's two layers of flowers and two layers of leaves. And I wanted to start with the leaves and I think that is C and D. So what I did is I took a piece of white cardstock cut to six by six, which is the same size as the stencil. I'm placing this on my magnetic work surface placed one of the first layers of the stencil over the top and this first layer of ink that I'm using is a green hills so it's a nice light green the stencils all have some squares in the corners registration marks is what I like to call them and I'm going to make sure I color those in so I know exactly where I'm going to line up the other stencils now I wanted to add a little bit more definition and detail to this kind of spruce these up a little bit so I brought in some pine ink still on that same stencil and adding a little bit down towards the bottom of each of these leaves. So that is the first stencil I'm starting with. Now the second stencil, I'm making sure that the etching, the A, B, C, and D are all in the bottom left hand corner. Now for this one, I wanted to experiment with my colors a little bit. So this is Paradise Ink and this is kind of where things started to not go as planned. I had not used this stencil before, so this is the first time. Usually it takes me about two or three tries to come up with a color combination that I like. Now here, I was trying to do the same thing as I did in the other uh, set of leaves. This time I brought in, I think it was Fresh Lawn Ink. Now as I was applying this color over that teal color, I was not liking it, but I finished it off so they were all consistent. And this time I brought in Bermuda. So I'm going right over the top of that green that I had just placed down. I was hoping this would kind of mask that green a little bit. Now that wasn't bad. I was happier with this than I was with the blue and green combo. So I'm moving on to the next layer. Now each time I am lining up my registration corners. I did clean off my work surface of all of that green. You just want to make sure your stencil is in the same kind of orientation as when you started so that all of your layers line up. Now for this one, for the first set of flowers, I did azalea ink and I'm going to bring in dandelion ink and add a little bit of this over the top of some of my pink flowers. Now what I thought I was going to do was an a rainbow assortment of flowers. You're going to see that that is not what happened. I went up to the top, added some dandelion to those flowers. This is still on that same layer of the stencil, the first uh, set of flowers. Now I'm bringing in another one of those teal colors. I think this was paradise. And this is where I realized my mistake. Those flowers blended in way too much with my leaves, but I'm not going to start over. I'm just going to keep going. This is bringing in the last flower layer of the stencil. And this time I'm just gonna go through and do all pink flowers. I figured that I started with a big enough piece of cardstock that I can just trim out what I like. Now here I'm adding a little detail to the centers using a mini blending tool and some crimson ink. I am gonna make sure I leave the outer edge of the petals that light color. Now there are some little like wonky dots on here on each of the flower layers. And for that, I am going to use intensified black ink. Now I need to bring in that other layer of the stencil with the flowers and fill in those dots too. So I'm glad I didn't completely start over because I really do love how this ends up being. There's just kind of that top corner or the run side of the card that just wasn't quite what I was hoping. But by starting out with that bigger piece of cardstock, this really worked out. Now I'm going to place this in my Misty stamping tool and I'm bringing in another new set. This is Positive Script. It is a background stamp, so it's already mounted on foam, which means I can remove the foam insert from my Misty. Now, one of the ideas I had for this was doing a kind of just a subtle background to this. And I'm starting with wet cement. I wasn't really sure how bold this was gonna come across on my background. So I put a piece of white cardstock over the top of my blended panel. I'm stamping that down. 
and then I'll remove that piece of cardstock and stamp on top of my background. So this is a second generation stamping. If you're not familiar with it, it was like one of the very first techniques I ever learned when I started card making. So here you can barely see it and I could barely see it in person. So I decided to try it again. I placed that scrap cardstock in there, stamped it down, removed that, and then stamped my background again. Now at this point, it still really wasn't showing up. I figured I'd be here forever if I kept doing it like this. So I decided to just, just jump in, just do it. So I inked that up for my third time with wet cement, and I'm going to stamp this down, making sure that my cardstock is always positioned in that bottom corner. Now that actually looked pretty bold to me, but I knew this would kind of dry back a little bit. So I'm gonna leave it and I really do like how that ended up looking. Now I'm going to use a hexagon die to die cut out a piece of the panel that I really like. I used a piece of white cardstock that measures four and a quarter by five and a half. So I knew how big I could go with that hexagon. And then I used that one and die cut out a specific area of my background. Now I wanna show you this. I really like this panel here that I die cut it from. I'm thinking this would look really good in a scrapbook or journal where you could put words in the center there over the open area or even a picture. So I'm going to save that. So for the front of my card, I have the luggage lowercase alphabet set that I plan on using. I have a bunch of these sentiments. This is from the everyday sentiment set. These are extras that I had left over from another project. So I decided to use that. And then I have this delicate butterfly. Again, it was another piece that I already had die cut out. So I'm going to use it. So it's really helpful to save your extra pieces that you're die cutting or you just have a lot of and you're saving them. So my letters, the H-E-Y for hay, I die cut out of some black glitter cardstock. What I did is I took part of that sentiment and that's how I decided what I was going to use that luggage lowercase alphabet for. So it's going to say, hey, gorgeous. So I layered the hay up two other times with white cardstock and then added that black glitter on top to give dimension. I'm glued together my butterfly. And now I took my hexagon and I'm just backing that with some foam tape to pop this up on the front of my card front. So my card front is four and a quarter by five and a half. Then I'm taking that smaller sentiment and I'm trimming off the word gorgeous because that's the only piece of the sentiment that I need. I have everything positioned where I want it to go on the front of my card. So I'm just gonna start attaching everything using liquid glue. I started with barely arts glue, but it must be really warm in my house cause that glue became really, really fluid. So I switched over to the Hero Arts Precision Glue and I'm using that to attach all of my letters. For the word gorgeous, I just used some of the spare pieces of those strips that I had die cut out. There is a coordinating die that goes with this that cuts out these strips. And it's also great for layering your strips up to create dimension, or you can use foam squares. Now for the butterfly, I'm not gonna add any dimension to that because I already have plenty there with my hexagon shape. So I'm just gluing that down in the bottom there using my liquid glue then that is going to finish up my card project. So even though it kind of started out rocky where I really wasn't happy with anything or I almost started over, I'm glad I worked through it, kind of just went with the flow. And also I was really glad I was able to use some of my scraps or just extra die cut pieces that I have been saving. So I'm glad I was able to put those to use. I will have all of my supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and I'll see you again real soon.